What's going on? Happy New Year everybody. Welcome to 2017 and the newest addition here to my videos. Uh, I tried to do this very video yesterday and my gear just didn't want to stay broken. So what I have for you, if you remember two days ago my VTX quit working. Yesterday I tried, I started to try to fix it but in testing just to prove that it was broken I didn't prove it was broken, I proved that it fixed itself. So I went and flew, maybe three packs in, the VTX died again, and so I'm back here to bring you the idea that was brought to me from um, the Lightning Stalker in the comments to my video where I, what was it? Yeah, the one where I crashed a bunch. Yeah, so uh, in the comments he left about the VTX that maybe I should try throwing it in the toaster oven. And what that is called is a reflow. And it's something I'd never really thought about doing with my mini quad parts. Um, I do know that in the manufacturing process, they will heat up the entire uh, circuit board, melt all of the solder, and it's called reflowing. And it just smooths out all your solder uh, points. So. What I am going to do today is I'm going to disassemble this quad, take the VTX off, cut off the um, heat shrink and everything to make sure we don't get any damage from that, and I'm going to throw it in the oven. I googled the melting point of solder, and 6040 solder melts at about 370 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to crank that oven to probably 425 to 450 to be on the safe side, and toss it in there for a good while, let it get completely to that temperature, and then pull it out and hopefully we'll have a new, we'll have a working VTX at that point. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and take apart this quad and just show you guys what I'm seeing with it. Um, basically the LEDs are lighting up, but there's no video being transmitted. So let's, uh, and not black, if it's black, that's probably your camera being dead. I'm just getting pure static, there's no signal coming across on the 5.8 band. Okay, so let's go get into this quad. Okay, so what we have here is I've kind of taken the top plate off of my quad. Uh, you can see that the lights are on on the VTX. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug in my goggles. Plug in my goggles and put it into band scan mode. Now you notice that there are no peaks all across the band. Um, it's just a flat, flat line which tells me that there's nothing really transmitting that strongly on 5.8. There's a little peak here and there because I do have uh, a 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi router that's running right now, but nothing, uh, not a typical FPV signal. And so now what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and turn on that VTX. So it's one of those you gotta press and hold the button to get it on. And now we are on. The VTX is on, and there is no peak. Yay, it doesn't work. Um, I never thought I'd be so excited to see something not work. You see that little green LED? The green one says that it's transmitting. So all the lights are on and indicating that the VTX is good. The band scan is showing you that there is nothing being transmitted by this VTX. Now that we've confirmed that it doesn't work, I'm going to go ahead and... Um take it off of the frame, get it unplugged. That just, cause I know people are gonna ask, that big glob of hot glue is because this plug went bad. The little part that locks it in place has broken. And so the hot glue is just to keep it from coming unplugged in flight. It's a cheap fix, it's an ugly fix, but it works. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the frame and strip it of the heat shrink and get it ready to throw in the oven. I just did a little bit of extra Googling because I really wanna make sure that I do this right and I've never tried to reflow a circuit board. Now, as you can see here, the uh, I've got the VTX completely stripped of all the components. Oh, I have it completely stripped of all the components. Uh, if you wanted to know what I was using, there it is. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna set this up on a baking sheet and I'm gonna crank the temperature of the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put a thermometer in there and we're gonna set a timer. Uh, about 20 minutes, it should be up to temperature. And um, now while it's at temperature, you don't wanna move anything around. So we're gonna wait till the oven hits 450 and then we're gonna turn it off and we're just gonna leave it and let it sit there. Cause if you jostle this, you can end up moving some of those teeny tiny components that are on the circuit board and that's gonna be counterproductive. You're gonna break things. It's not gonna do what you want it to. So we're just gonna heat it up and let it cool down on its own and hopefully at the end of it, this VTX will work again.
Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not. The oven temp has reached 450 degrees on the inside and we are turning it off. So the oven reached the target temp of 450. We've turned it off. Now we're just waiting on everything to cool down until it gets below at least 370 degrees Fahrenheit, which that's the uh, melting temp for solder. But really we're gonna aim until it's, you know, 100 or less because that's kind of a temperature that I can easily handle it at. Okay, looks like everything's kind of cooled off to a point where I should be able to touch it. Oh, and it's stuck. <laughs> well, the sticker didn't quite make it through the, um, the process. That's okay. Everything's kind of got a little bit of a tint to it. Hey, let's get it over here. Okay, I don't know how easy, you, how much you can tell from C on here but everything's kind of yellowed just a little bit. I don't know if that's normal. The sticker kind of shriveled up and died in the, in the oven, which that doesn't surprise me. But we got hot, everything got hot enough that it should have melted the solder and reflowed it well. So, button still seems to click. Let's plug it up and see what happens. How about that? Okay, checking out the band scanner again. It looks like everything's nice and flat. Nobody's FPVing around here on this drizzly day. And uh, let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. I'm gonna set you down over here. Plug it in. Okay. No magic smoke. Uh, the LEDs come on, so I didn't, I didn't totally kill it in the oven. All right, and looking at the band scanner, I'm gonna go ahead and push the button and turn on the VTX now. And we're green. Holy crap, we got a peak. <laughs> it freaking worked. All right. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, dead VTX plus oven makes working VTX. All right. Wow. <laughs> All right. There you have it. I took my dead VTX, threw it in the oven, baked it at 450 degrees, and brought life back to it. All right, I, I honestly, I was hopeful that it would work. I thought that in theory that it might work, but I didn't really, I thought that it was gonna not work and I was gonna have to swap out VTXs today, but now I got a new, not a new, but I have a revitalized VTX and my quad is fully functional again. I'm just gonna have to slap some new uh, heat shrink on that VTX and um, remount it to the top plate and we're good to go. So I'm gonna get to doing that and editing this up for you guys. We'll see you again tomorrow with something new. All right guys, if you found this uh, video useful and helped you out some, give me a like, let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, subscribe, check out some of these other videos. I am gonna be making as many videos this month as I can. I know it's not gonna be on a daily basis, but I will be making lots of more content. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you again next time. All right, have a good one.